Hello and welcome to session two with the specific products WWVC standard frequency comparator. This is going to be a fairly short one because I'm going to be setting this aside to get to other stuff on the bench that was ahead of it. And if I concentrate on this, it's going to get expensive because this is going to be very time consuming. So I'm going to set this aside and tinker with it as I find time so that I don't have to get carried away with pricing on this. We have it working sort of. I touched up a couple of suspicious solder joints and tightened one tube pin socket over there on the RF front end, on the RF amplifier front end. And the radio woke up. The oscillator's working. Uh, I can receive WWV. There goes the furnace. Let me wait for okay, wait this out. plant shut back down, and I'll tell you where I am so far. We have the, rate, the receiver is working. I have done no alignments on it yet. Um, that would be premature. In fact, all of the slugs on this appear to have the factory Glyptol still in place. They look like they've never been disturbed since this was manufactured. That's a good sign. That means people haven't been in here playing around with it. However, when I turned it on, when I started getting WWV, it was extremely distorted. The audio was very distorted. <clears throat> and I just flipped the radio up and I looked at the back and looking through the back of the speaker here, I could see distortion. Then I took the speaker off and this is what greeted me. And as you can see, that speaker has pretty much had it. In fact, that little centerpiece in there looks like the moths have been to it and it's quite crunchy so I didn't have a two and a half inch square speaker to replace it with so for the time being I've MacGyvered in a little round transistor radio speaker far from ideal and probably introducing distortion of its own but it cleared it up a great deal the audio was still distorted and I went in and I went to wiggle the audio output tube and actually had smoke come off my fingers. And I took a look in there and noticed that the whole inside of the tube was glowing red. It's a 6AK6 uh, power pentode tube that they're using single-ended Class A for the audio amplifier. And I dimmed the lights here in the lab and the anode had a blush spot on it and what when you look through the tube it looks like the whole screen grid is glowing red not a good sign now I've checked done some pre preliminary checks everything around it looks fine I think the tube is faulty now I tested it there's no shorts it has plenty of emission but that doesn't tell the entire story if one of the grids is distorted and running away this would be the result. Uh, you're overheating the screen, but there's also something else suspicious going on that I have been trying to track down. The schematic I have for this, incidentally, is for an older version using uh, vacuum tube rectifiers. However, most of the schematic seems to match this receiver exactly, or at least the sections I've checked around the audio amplifier and most of the areas seem to agree this resistor dropping network is identical. The major difference being instead of a 5Y3 there's solid state rectifiers and instead of a 6.8X4 there's solid state rectifiers. Other than that the schematic's pretty close. The problem is there are no voltages on the schematic. I don't have a service manual for this and there are absolutely no voltage references on this schematic so you really don't know what you're working with however in running some preliminary checks I came up with some interesting stuff and let's see if we can get this entirely in frame here I think that's probably gonna make it we have a 750 volt secondary in the transformer with a center tap that's 375 volts RMS on each side center taps grounded 375 volts rectified would be 530 peak with no load that's how high the voltage would get on the rectifiers now in most receivers they count on the circuitry dragging that voltage down to the level that they want to operate at however at the first filter capacitor right here which is a 40 microfarad 450 volts 
the voltage is 465. Now that's above the rating of the capacitor. How the capacitor has survived this long is kind of a mystery to me. We go through a 500 ohm 10 watt, that is spot on. We go to another 40, 450, where we have 410, a much more reasonable voltage. The drop across this resistor is dropping us to 410. This 465, however, concerns me. Then we go through a 1K 10 watt resistor, and we have the tap where the 6AK6 audio amplifier and several other tubes. That's why the plus, 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 it goes all over the radio. That measures 305 volts right at this point and I forgot to take the voltage on the last one I should have looked at that it doesn't really matter by this point we're getting down to reasonable voltage we go through another 10k dropping resistor that is spot on the money as well all of these dropping resistors and then this goes off and feeds multiple tubes Are we still in frame yeah we're in frame here good I hope this is clear the interesting thing is when the B plus comes down to the 6AK5, it goes first to the screen grid. We have a suppressor grid, a screen grid, and a control grid. The voltage is fed to the suppressor grid and one side of the audio transformer, primary side of the audio transformer. That's 305 volts on the screen. It goes through the audio transformer. By the time it gets to the anode, it's down to 274 volts. Normally, you try to run the anode higher than the screen, um, at least in a beam power tube like a 6L6. I'm not familiar with the 6AK6. However, I did download the data sheet for it. Surprisingly, this was not in my RCA uh, handbook, and it's an RCA tube, but it's considered an industrial tube. Let me find the. Uh, okay, the we data have sheet. the data sheet for the 6AK5 in hand here. And it says typical operation class A amplifier, which is what this obviously is. It's a single ended amplifier with, a output, with an output transformer, so it's going to be a class A1 amplifier. They have the suppressor grid uh, connected to the cathode, which is what we have. They show the screen voltage as 180 volts, and we're running 305 volts. They show the anode voltage also 180 volts, and our anode is 274. Now, see, they have them at the same voltage, which kind of makes sense. Usually, the, the screen is somewhere near the same voltage or somewhat less than the anode. Here the situation is reversed, so I don't know quite what to make of that. Uh, it shows the grid voltage of minus 9 uh, and uh, signal current up to 9 volts, which would bring the grid almost uh, to unity. I'm running minus 7.7 .7 on the grid, so that seems fairly normal. I'm beginning to suspect that even though this tube tests good, there's a problem with the tube. This capacitor is not shorted. Uh, we're isolated here. This capacitor is not shorted. This 100k ohm resistor is fine. The cathode's grounded like it's supposed to be. The suppressor grid is at ground potential as it's supposed to be. Everything seems to check out except these two voltages. And it just seems funny that the screen is so much higher. I I can't make hit. I can't make sense of that. But one fact is for sure that the support the screen grid or something inside that tube is glowing quite red and it's not the filament it's the whole inside of the tube is glowing red and there's a blush as I say there's a uh, a circle on the anode that gets red as well so until I can track that down uh, I don't I can't uh, make much more headway here. I think I'm going to get a 6AK5. Maybe the guy who owns this has one. He has quite a collection of radio paraphernalia. So I'm going to drop him an email and see if he has any 6, or not 6AK5, 6AK6. I keep saying 6AK5 because that's what's in the handbook. It stops at 6AK5. 6AK6. I did, like I say, I found this online. We'll show you briefly how it sounds what it's doing 
and then we're going to shut her down because we don't want to do any more damage if that tube goes short. But we'll turn it on and it should warm up. You can see the carrier, maybe you can see the carrier meter is coming up. If I can get the light over here. The carrier meter is running up. The uh, CR, yeah, the CRT is working, the scope is working. That's five megahertz. That's 10. There's a carrier there. 15, 20, and 25, we don't hear anything. Okay, right in the middle of that, my battery and the camera died. It made about five videos already, and I hadn't been keeping an eye on it, so I have the uh, other set of batteries in the camera. I realize that wasn't a very impressive demonstration of reception. Um, however, it's getting on towards evening. When I was using this earlier on the 10 megahertz band, the, this thing was jumping off the table. With, you know, the signal was so strong. It has just faded away. This actually is rated at one microvolt of sensitivity, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, but I went over and checked on my 746 Pro, and I can't get WWV. I can barely hear it on 10 megahertz, and it wasn't coming in as good as it was on this receiver. Uh, the signal strength was actually better on this old timer than it is on my new radio. I forget what the specs are on the 746 Pro, but I know it's not one microvolt. And of course, there goes the heating okay, plant again. Heating plant shut down. We'll wrap this up and uh, get the video posted, and I'll move on to other things for the time being. If anybody knows of an actual service manual for one of these, I would be greatly indebted, but I suspect there's nothing out there. I suspect there's only the manuals with the schematic, but it would really be nice to have uh, something documented as to what the voltages are supposed to be. I'm going to order that 6AK6 and get one of those in. Uh, it could simply be a case of that tube is bad and it's not drawing enough anode current to drag, drag the B plus down. And, uh, that can be fairly common. If a tube isn't in there to pull the B-plus down, the B-plus can run a lot higher than it's supposed to. I don't believe they've been getting away with running 465 volts into a 450 volt cap for very long or for many years. I think the cap would have failed long before this and that certainly is the original electrolytic. In fact, I would venture that every component in here is original with maybe the exception of a couple of tubes. Um, but they're all RCAs. They're all the same brand. So who knows? This may all be 100% original. This may have not seen much use in its time. At any rate, I'm done with it for now. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Hope it wasn't too boring. See ya.